Welcome to the coffee shop, everybody. This is going to be a really quick video. Yes, a quick one, uh, because I'm going to show you something. The first strategy video that we're going to do. This is on RSI divergences. Yeah, we're doing RSI divergences. Big tool that you can have in your tool belt. This is some expert level stuff. All right. So welcome to the coffee shop. This is your host and barista, Eric, and I have something very cool for you. Today is the first video that the algo, the day of the first video since the algo has basically finished development. And in this video uh, will be the first strategy video that I will send to you. In this video, I am going to show you the easiest way to spot divergences. Okay. Uh, using the Heiken Ashi algo oscillator. Most of my videos have been between 15 and 20 minutes long, and this video could end up being so short that I almost feel like I have to fill it with a bunch of dialogue just to match the length of those other videos. But I know you don't have a lot of time on your hands. Most of you are scalpers with very little patience, and you probably have a short attention span. You know, like, look, there's a squirrel outside. He's carrying a shiny red ball, and he's getting chased by a dog. Oh, well. All right, well, what were we talking about? Anyway, um, what is the key thing to understand? And what is a divergence? And how do you see them? Plus, what do they mean when you do see them, right? So divergence trading is one of the big time strategies that you can use in your tool belt of all the strategies that you should learn. Just as a piece of advice, you should not try and use just one strategy. Instead, you need to practice several different strategies and use them when the market is in certain phases. For example, uptrends, downtrends, when it's consolidating, when it's ranging, when it's in distribution, when you're looking for uh, supply and demand trading, when you're range trading. Okay, all those different phases of the market is when you're supposed to use different strategies within those phases. So instead, you need to practice several different strategies and use them when the market is in certain phases. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a new tool for your toolbox. Using the Heiken Ashi Algo Oscillator, it's really, really, really easy to spot divergences. I put an extra really in there because it's really easy. So let's do the thing, shall we? Go to your indicators, type in Heiken, oh, I always spell it wrong, H-E-I-K-E-N, Ashi Algo, and it's there in the community scripts, Heiken Ashi Algo by Coffee Shop Crypto. Click it once and hit that little star, add it to your favorites and make sure it's on your chart. You should be good to go from the uh, default settings. All I did was I went in, I'm doing it with you now. I went in and I turned off both stochastic indicators. I just turned them off because I don't need them on the screen for this particular presentation. Okay. Now, uh, let me get back to my notes because the notes are for the people that use uh, closed captions and I want to make sure that everything follows, right? Using the Heiken Ashi Algo Oscillator, it is really, really, really easy to spot divergences because you only need to consider the uh, levels of the RSI. Uh, you only need to consider certain levels of the RSI, okay? Certain levels of the RSI. These levels being an RSI value that are over plus 10 and under minus 10. So this is why the oscillator, ha you have been watching the oscillator develop in the way that it is, okay? This green line is plus 10. This red line is minus 10. If you have an RSI value of a high or a low anywhere inside this channel, you do not care about it. I'm telling you. This is the easiest way to spot an actual RSI divergence. If you are looking for highs and lows inside this area, you're doing it wrong. Look for the ones that are outside that area, okay? You want to look for lows here. You want to look for highs here. That's it. That's where you look for your lows and your highs. Let me get back to my notes. Hang on. When you have an RSI value outside of that channel, outside of that mid channel, uh, those are the only RSI values that you should take into consideration when looking for highs or lows. 
you obviously will have separate RSI values all over the place, all over the oscillator. Here's a high, here's a high, here's a high, here's a low, here's another low and another low. But are they valid to you? No. And don't waste your time looking at them because they are irrelevant to what you're doing. Okay. So enough with the technical reasons why and the visual representation of what you should be looking for. You got that now. You are 9 out of 10 the way there. You are 90% there. That's all you needed to know, though. This is the biggest problem that some people have. They're looking for the RSI values in the wrong place. I have never, to this date, seen or heard another advisor telling anyone about that particular thing. And to be honest, I don't think they know. Anyway, so... Mainly, there are two issues when people are trying to read divergences but have no idea how to spot them. The first problem is they the first problem they have is they don't know where to look because there are so many highs and lows all over the RSI. But you have no idea which values are relevant and which ones are not. Well, I just showed you. I'll repeat this again. Inside this mid channel, you don't care what they are. You look for your highs here. You look for your lows down here. Okay, plus ten and minus 10. You want to be either above plus 10 or below minus 10. That's what you're looking for. Now, the second problem is this. When you have an RSI value that is lower than the previous low, okay? You have a low RSI and then you get a lower RSI, okay, outside of that channel. That means price should be moving down, but price continues to move up. And I figured out why that is. There are God level traders that have not been able to tell me what this problem is. And I think by mistake on the previous update of the algo, I end up instituting a tool that tells you when that is going to happen. Now, listen, let me repeat that again. Okay. Your RSI previous low value, let's say previous low was a low. Now your new low is a lower low. That means price should move down, but instead price moves up and it moves against you. And I think I figured out why that happens. And I have it plotted here on my chart. I'll show it to you and you can back test it on your own if you like. And you know, we'll see if that plays out the way. Now let's get into this. An RSI divergence. Let me show you what one is to begin with. Okay. I drew this line here. Let me take it off. What you have is a high value. You can see that this high is outside and above this green line. So I have an RSI high value. Then I have an RSI low value, right? So price had come up and now it's down and now it's moving up again. So on my oscillator, I see that RSI closes lower than the previous one. Okay, here's my high value. So what do I do? My high is here and then I have a lower high. Basically, the RSI is the king against your price. If the RSI says it's lower, then price moves down. So here you have your RSI. It's a low value. Oops, sorry, I actually have the wrong. There we go. Um, so here's your high on your RSI and the high on your price. Here's the high on your RSI and the high on your price right there. You can see that this one is lower than this one. The price is lower. The RSI is lower. It's substantially lower. You should be prepared for a pretty strong move to the downside, which, by the way, usually cuts off when your moving average crosses above it or when your RSI crosses that line. I just wanted to give you that little piece of flex note, right? So anyway, RSI is down compared to the previous. Price is down compared to the previous. That means you get into a sell position. And you can do that when the, os when the oscillator tells you to sell, right? Uh, it also works the other way around if it's a higher RSI value, but your price is slightly different. For example, here, here I have a low, here's a low, here's a lower low, right? But if I look at my RSI, here's a low, here's a slightly higher low. RSI is up compared to the previous. Price is down. That means I am going to be in an uptrend Easy enough, if the RSI is higher than the previous one, but your price is, is the other way, then you are going into an uptrend. You are following the direction of the RSI. Again, I'm only looking at the ones outside of this channel, outside of the channel. That's it. I don't care about all of these. Now, what happens in a trending market? You can see that you are in an uptrend, high, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. 
I don't want to sound like a broken record. Now, you can see that you have an RSI value that is high, higher, higher, it's getting higher, and it's getting higher. But how do you know when it's going to end? Well, all of the highs are higher, but it loses momentum. You can see here that at one point the RSI dipped down into no momentum. See how it's black? This is the thing that I think I found out by mistake. Just didn't even realize I was doing it. You lost momentum. So there's this little push to the upside and then it comes back down again. This black area means no momentum. It means no momentum to the upside or the downside. So price runs flat. Do not enter when you see that. Do not enter when you see this blackness back here. Don't enter. You have to figure that, hey, I should get out of my trade. I got in nice and low. I got a little profit. I'm not going to wait for the rest. I'm going to wait until the market is doing something. Okay? So there's that other one. That's two of them for you, right? You got a low and a lower low. We covered that one. You got a low and a lower low. Now, this one is not valid. We didn't cover this one. I'm sorry. Here you see a low on your price and a lower low on your price, right? Your RSI is telling you what? You have a low and a lower low. It should move down, but it moves up. Why is it moving up? The better question is why am I looking at these RSI values? This is not valid. It's inside this channel. Don't worry about it, okay? This, not valid. Bye-bye. I don't care about those. Doesn't matter. That is a range. You don't care about that. Now, here I have a high on my RSI and a higher high, but it moves against me. See, I have a high and then a higher high, but then it moves against me. Why is it doing that? As the RSI comes down, goes back inside the range, and I have a loss in momentum. Do not enter. You should just get out. You are in a trade. You got some profit. Get out. Now, here's another one. This, well, I basically covered this already. I'm going to cover it again real quick. Here you have a high outside of your range. Okay, you have a high and a higher high. Here you have a high. This is the high of your RSI right there. And you have a higher high in your price. So price is moving up. RSI is moving up, right? But no momentum. It immediately changes positions. As soon as the RSI comes down, you look in here and you see that this is black section right there. You can see it. Okay? That's telling you loss of momentum and price shoots down. Last one I'm going to show you because they are very far apart and this is important to see. So you have a low. You have a low, but it's inside the range. You have the next low outside the range and it is slightly down. This is why this one became invalid. You have a low and a lower low. They are far apart from each other, but they are still outside the range. You have a, this is that same low and the other low is here. This low is higher. You can clearly see that the RSI is pointing down. The RSI value is lower. So do not enter because price is what? Moving down until it reaches a point of change. Something has to tell it that it's over. You have a massive loss of all momentum to the downside. Look at the oscillator. No momentum to the downside. No momentum to the downside. It's slightly changing to green. You have momentum to the upside. You have a high and a higher high. Okay. What else do you need to know? Like really, what else do you need to know? All right. There is obviously more to it than that. There's a lot more to it than that, but I wanted to give you these just quick little uh, instances to help you narrow down and be able to practice looking at RSIs, okay, and RSI divergences. So eventually, I would like to create the script that will draw the lines for you, but I think that's going to be too much stuff. So uh, let's just get into teaching you guys how to look at price action. Okay, so RSI divergences. This was a quick video. I want you to just rewind it. Go back to the beginning play it again because I'm ending it right here. Thanks, people.